Pues está lo que está, está lo que está. Oh. <risa> Hey there, I'm ML7 and I'm here to teach you how to play Ana. I know she's a hero with a reputation of being hard to master, but don't let that scare you. This guide got you covered both beginners and advanced players. This video is sponsored by Blizzard Entertainment and we're really hyped up to work with them. Let's get this started. Ana is an aim based support that combines hit scan and projectile types of shooting with high impact abilities that will help you secure more wins on the battlefield and I'm gonna break down how you can use her kit in the most efficient ways possible. Let's start with her weapon, the Biotic Rifle. The ammo she uses can heal your allies or it can damage your enemies. It's important to keep in mind that she uses the same type of ammo both for healing and damage. Try to do 1 to 2 damage shots and use the rest of your ammo for healing. Do the damage shots to enemy characters that have 200 or 150 health pools because Granny's shots sting. You only need 3 of them currently to secure a kill onto a squishy target. Reload when you don't need to heal or do damage. If your team is hiding around walls while being full HP and there is no enemy in sight, then it's time to reload. With Anna's gun, you can do three different types of shots. Unscope, scope and quick scope shots. Unscope shots are projectiles, so you need to predict where the target you're shooting at is going to be when the bullet hits, while also taking into consideration the travel time of the bullet. Targets being at a long range will be hard to hit, while targets that are in a close range will be easy to hit. You'll most of the times use unscope shots for close range targets. You do not suffer a movement penalty when you operate in this mode. You can jump and move as you like. The bullets leave no trace, which means that it is hard for the enemy to predict where you're shooting at. If one of your allies is hiding in the distance, waiting for the enemy to pass through, and is low HP, heal them up with unscope shots so you don't give away their position. Shots fired while scoped in our head scan. When you shoot, the bullets will go directly where your cursor is placed at the moment of shooting. You should use scoped in shots at medium to long range. They have a couple of downsides. You suffer a movement penalty when you stay scoped in, making you an easier target to hit. If you jump, you'll exit the scoped in mode, but keep in mind that you can still crouch while using it. You lose a bit of your field of view, so maybe you won't catch that cheeky flanking tracer to your left. The bullets leave a trace. This means that the enemies can see where you're shooting at, which might compromise your teammates' surprise flanks. This is how you can play around these downsides. You want to stay scoped in when you're playing in a safe position where the enemies cannot contest you, usually on high ground, a bit behind your team. Try to stay scoped in as little as possible. Do not walk around while staying scoped in. Quick scope shots. Sometimes you need to switch positions while still doing hit scan shots, or you want to take duels while not suffering any movement penalty so that you're harder to hit. This is when quick scoping comes into help. Quick scopes are done by going into the scoped in animation, shooting as soon as the animation starts, and exiting the scoped in animation after the shot is fired. If you want more information on quick scopes, I've covered the topic exhaustively in another video. Check the description for the link. For a basic aim training routine, check out this workshop mode from PMA Jellies. Anna's sleep dart is a projectile that makes an enemy target go to sleep for a short duration, making them unable to do anything. If the target gets damaged while being slept, they will wake up. It has a small wind-up time which can be tricky to get used to. From my experience, there are three ways to shoot the sleep dart. The panic method. When you wiggle your camera aggressively, hoping that the sleep dart will hit something. It will, but mostly air particles. The prediction method. When you try to predict where your target will be, right as you start the wind-up animation. This is what the majority of players use. The flick method. You start the wind-up animation, and just as it ends and the sleep dart leaves the chamber, you flick your cursor to where the target is. This is the hardest, but most efficient way to hit sleep darts in my opinion. When to use it. Here's a list of scenarios. For self-protection, when the enemies have a hero that has the primary goal to kill you, Tracer, Doomfist, and so on. To counter ultimates, such as Winston's Primal Rage or Rash's Bob. As an entry pick tool, for instance, Sleep Dart the Sniper by Jiggle picking the wall once, then picking again while shooting the Sleep Dart. At the beginning of the game, see what heroes the enemy has and think about who you need to save the sleep dart for in order to protect yourself, as well as what ultimates you can counter. Biotic Grenade The Biotic Grenade is one of the most powerful abilities in the game. 
It's a projectile that splashes on impact and it can be applied both to enemies and allies at the same time, but with different effects. For allies, it heals them for a sizable amount of health and applies a buff that increases all healing received, including from health packs. For enemies, it deals a decent amount of damage and keeps them from being healed throughout the effect's duration. In order to understand the nade trajectory, make a custom game with the training range settings on, put zero cooldowns and just throw the nade for a couple of minutes until you get used to it. Do not try to throw the nade exactly onto allies slash enemies, you should always look to take advantage of the splash characteristic it has and use it accordingly. Splash the nade on walls, throw it above enemy shields to apply the anti-nade effect, Throw the nade between you and an enemy when you're doing a 1v1 to apply the healing to you and the damage to them. Understand that the nade can be blocked by enemy shields and that it can be cleansed by certain abilities. Save the nade for big ultimates like EMP or Graviton Surge. As a side note, heal denial is the most efficient way to deal against the Nyata's Transcendence, so if possible, save your nade for it. Last thing I want to talk about in this section is preset grenades. They used to get an early wool charge or to break choke points. The maximum time Ana's nade can stay in the air is 6 seconds, so sometimes you'll see players pick certain reference points to align themselves to so that they can throw a preset grenade into the sky. Here's a workshop mode from Darwin's streams where you can make up your own. Ana's ultimate is nano boost. It is single target, usable only on allies and it applies two buffs, a damage buff and a damage reduction buff which means that the hero that is nanoed does more damage to the enemies and takes less damage from them. The nano lasts for a couple of seconds and, when applied, the target also receives an instant burst of healing. Remember that Ana's ultimate does not increase healing done, so nanoing as any transcendence or a mercy for example will not result in more heals. The nano boost sensitivity setting means how precise you need to aim on your ally in order to apply the nano while the nano confirmation setting, if set to on, will ask you to confirm your nano selection. Usually, nano boost is used aggressively and in combination with ultimates, nano blade for example. Keep in mind that the nano boost is strong also without ultimates. You have a Zarya that glows like a Christmas tree and there are enemies close to her, nano her for fast kills. Unconventionally, nano boost can be used defensively as well, especially due to the healing it does. Your Reinhardt is getting very low HP while fighting the other Reinhardt, nano him. For more explanations about who are the best heroes to nano, check the description. How to position yourself with Ana? As a support, you should always be positioned behind your tanks and be the last one to die in teamfights. With this being said, if the enemy is playing with flankers, you want to play close to your team so that they can help you out. If the enemy doesn't have heroes that can contest you easily, keep a medium to long distance from your team. Better positioning comes with experience, and experience comes by playing or by watching others play. Top 3 heroes that go best with Ana. From tank, Zarya. Ana has the highest single target healing in the game, which means that your Zarya can play really aggressive if you hit your shots. From DPS, Soldier. They complement each other well, often playing side by side. Nano Visor is a very strong offensive combo, and if Ana ever needs heal, she can ask for a healing station from Soldier. From support, Lucio. Granny's biggest weakness is her lack of mobility. Lucio can help her reposition faster with his speed boost and can peel pretty well for her. Brig is also really good at keeping her alive. Top 3 heroes Ana's best against. From tank, Roadhog. Easy target to sleep, easy target to nade, and you're probably not going to play in his range of effectiveness to get contested by him unless he flanks. From DPS, Bastion. Ana's good against almost every DPS, but I think she is stellar against Bastion. If he's playing alone, he is an easy sleep dark target, and if he's playing behind shields, try to look for an anti nade above the shield. From support, Brig. Brig is really oppressive and be quite hard to focus down, but with a well applied biotic grenade, the raid boss will die easier. Top 3 heroes that Ana struggles against. From tank, Diva, because her defense matrix can deny everything from Ana apart from the nano boost. Winston and Hammond are also tough matchups because they will be diving you. As long as you save both of your abilities for when they do this, you should be good to go. From DPS, Doomfist. You need to save both of your abilities for him and learn where he can come from in order to survive. Also, because of his shields, he's really hard to kill one-on-one. -on -one. From support, 
Ana doesn't particularly struggle against anyone, but a world thrown damage orb from Moira will force her to reposition or to use the nade to heal herself up. 